morning, or should I say evening, actually. Um, obviously, still in the UK. Um, got another 24 hours before we head back out to um, home, Australia. So, apologies, I was going to try and do a, a midweek video, but um, that was more reliant on um, people this end being available uh, for the purpose of what I needed to do in terms of speak to them um, about the measures that we're, we're looking to put in place. So what I've done is um, we're now sort of Saturday. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple of things and let you know exactly where we're at and what's, what's happening. A lot of people would have... Um, would have seen in 2018 we established a relationship with a with a uh, professional league here in the UK and it was with a friend of mine an ex-colleague who I did a lot of work with back in around 2006 2007 we both worked on the steering group for the the, the youth alliance uh, since then she set up a um, a league that sits under the academy league and bridges the gap between the colleges and the professional leagues, the academy leagues, is run in conjunction with the Premier League in the FA, so it is recognised. Um, and I'll just give you a rundown of some of the teams in that league. So you've got the likes of Brighton, uh, Brentford, Burnley, Chelsea, Crystal Palace, Everton, Reading, Leeds, Liverpool, um, Norwich, Newcastle United... Huddersfield, Portsmouth, QPR, Stoke, Sheffield United, Sunderland, Tottenham, Watford, just to name but a few. Uh, and a lot of these clubs um, or organisations and teams are actually shadow teams. So I want to make it clear that they're not actually the academy, they're actually the team underneath the academy. So they are feeder teams. Uh, and from these leagues and these teams, a lot of players, in excess of 60 players, have gone on to gain professional contracts. So the reason for the establishment of this, this partnership and uh, relationship was to, to offer a pathway for our best young players. Not just at our football club, but any football club, to be honest with you. Uh, and we're not looking to, to move kids from Australia to the UK or Europe, for that matter, but... We're just trying to open the network because we understand there is a number of talented footballers in Australia that um, require higher level of competition uh, and a higher level of challenge. And being approached by a number of parents and organisations to ask if there is something that is outside Australia. Part of our job as youth development coaches is provide an exit route and pathway. So also in line with that is to provide players for the uh, the pathway for Australia as well. So what we're trying to do is meeting the needs of the players and service that needs. Again, must make it clear that we're not saying that any boy or girl is going to have the opportunity to gain a professional contract from this because that would just be a blatant lie and I'm not going to lie. Uh, what it will do is provide them with the opportunity to have many sets of eyes on them to uh to potentially push on there is the option for kids or players to have the opportunity to uh, to be offered professional contracts of course there is but there's a number of factors that um that encompass that as well uh, players have to have uh, access to a european passport mainly a uk passport now because of uh brexit so there's a there's a lot of uh red tape if you like so hence why I said, you know, we're not going to be selling people a dream and saying you're going to be playing in Man United's first team in three years' time because that would just be a blatant lie. And this is more so for post-16. So uh, it is also to help them um, with their further education. So there is academia attached to it. Uh, but the league that they will be playing in is against other professional shadow group, shadow teams, etc. So... Um, I don't want to mislead anybody and again I must make it clear not looking to purposely take players away from Australia just want to provide another avenue for 
talented players who do want to explore the network uh, globally. So uh, what I'll do is I'll just give you a brief rundown. I'm conscious it's five minutes already, this, um, this video. I'll give you a, a brief rundown of what we're looking at doing um, and the way we want to do it. So we're looking at sending players post-16. So when boys and girls, uh, because there is girls attached to this as well, uh, turn 16, they could potentially come over to the UK and be placed in one of the clubs I mentioned. There's various other clubs uh, at different levels, Rochdales, Mansfields, as well as you know the championship clubs, the Barnsleys, um, the West Broms, and then obviously the Premier League clubs as well. So we would pitch the, the players at the right level. Um, and what I have said is in my correspondence, and I will be speaking to Louise on the phone later today or tomorrow, just to firm things up. Um, we want to make sure that we uh, we provide every opportunity for clubs to to actually view the players. So our club's quite fortunate. We've got the VO system, and I know a number of clubs have, but we have a number of cameras where we have a lot of eyes on our players. So we're going to share that footage with the, the clubs here in the UK. Obviously, we'll get the permission of the parents. Vast majority of them, especially on our full-time academy, already provide that um, permission. But again, for data protection, it's always uh, wise to make sure that we, um, we do things uh, properly. We're looking at bringing or taking um, a group of players from Australia to here in the UK. Now, these clubs do actually provide a rep team that go and play other rep teams in Qatar and places like that. Now the, the global network is reopening again. The borders are open. Uh, it's an ideal opportunity for, for, um, for players to be viewed everywhere. So from the leagues here, they do actually form rep teams, boys and girls, and they take them to, to play different rep teams. More importantly, they have a lot of scouts, so they get the, the best players together, they get them on a the field, and they'll, they'll play a couple of professional clubs, and they'll have scouts from every club watching these games. Um, and again, this is why they're highly successful at kids gaining uh, professional contracts. Again, I'm not saying any player from Australia will gain a contract, but there would be a provision in place if the player was good enough to be taken in by a professional club. Again, this is not us or me um, trying to make money. There's no money involved in this. Um, obviously, there will be some sort of talent ID stuff that we'll need to pull together and there'll be venues that need to be paid for. But this is to provide an opportunity and exit pathway for, for our players and other players that want to explore this as well. Um we also want to to bring some of the teams to Australia as well. So we understand that there's a number of players that actually want to come the opposite way. So we're actually opening the network up for the players in the leagues here and in the teams here to come out to, to us as well. We're not operating, operating as an agent or anything like that. Again, we're providing an opportunity for overseas players to come and play potentially in Australia. Again, there's a there's a little bit of red tape through FIFA with Article 19 to make sure we um, we're able to do so, which we are. But there's a bit of a rigmarole to go through to make sure that we we do things appropriately and accordingly to make sure we can service the the players that come out. So it's twofold really. Um, best players from our club or clubs in Australia, not just saying Queensland, in Australia, uh, heading to the UK, but also best players from the UK, from the rep teams, coming out to Australia as well. And that's why I've sort of said to Louise, potentially bring your rep team over to, to Australia, and that way we can, we can formulate some teams or get some teams of the right level that could play them, and then we have people from our leagues uh, in the MPL, even the A-leagues, to come and look at some of these good young players to see if they would be what they're looking for and potentially offer them a, a youth contract or a, a first-year professional contract 
in Australia. So that's 10 minutes I've just done there uh, talking away. But I wanted to provide you with an update on exactly where I'm at. Um, as I said, I'm not over here on a jolly up. Uh, it's predominantly work. Uh, and I have got uh, a couple of more meetings this afternoon. And I have got to try and fly up to, not fly, but travel up to St. George's Park to meet up with some ex-colleagues and friends and do a little bit of filming. But time's against me at the moment. So um, I'll leave this video here. Hope everybody's well back in Australia uh, and keeping well. And I hope everybody's navigated themselves through the floods. Um, been a very tricky time. Uh, I've kept an eye on a, a lot of things that have been going on. So all the best to people who've been working through that. Um, it's a great nation, Australia, um, in terms of people who work together and want to help one another. Fabulous. So I'll leave it here. I'll touch back base with you again. I'm still jet lagged. Um, hopefully over the next couple of days before I, um, I get on a plane tomorrow night, whatever it is, and then head back to, to the land down under. Okay.